Injection molds are used to create the pasta components that we interact with on a daily basis. You can make things all the way from Legos for your kids to play with, to needle syringes for doctors and nurses to use to inject shots into their patients. The problem with 3D printing is it's difficult to accomplish high accuracy and smooth surface finishes. So today, we're gonna combine the strengths of 3D printing and CNC machining to create a mold insert for an injection mold. But why would you 3D print a part that can easily be machined? Well, if we go into SolidWorks and we change our transparency on our mold insert, you'll see that inside we actually have conformal cooling channels. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna use additive manufacturing to actually create a core insert with conformal cooling channels. Imagine you just injected the plastic into your mold and it's conformed to the shape of your core insert. Well, now that plastic is molten and what needs to happen is it needs to cool to the point where it's solid. And if you look closely, right here there's a gap between our core and cavity and that's where we're gonna inject that molten plastic into to our mold and that molten plastic is going to take up the space between our core and our cavity insert. Now that plastic is actually hotter than the temperature of our mold and in order to make a solid plastic part it actually has to cool down to the point where it solidifies. Now these conformal cooling channels are actually going to help us draw heat away from our part. The addition of our conformal cooling channels can actually speed up the process of cooling our part by up to 70 percent. So if you're making a million parts that makes a big difference. Now typically with traditional manufacturing these conformal cooling channels would be very very difficult to achieve. But since we have additive manufacturing capabilities we can actually easily print these conformal cooling channels on our Mark Forge Metal X where we can print it out of H13 tool steel completely unattended. So here is the filament spool of H13 that we're gonna use to print our mold insert. Now when our material is in its filament form, it's actually very brittle and delicate. I can easily break it. After we're done printing, washing, and centering, we're gonna have a solid, dense metal part, and we're gonna prove that to you by giving it to Chris, letting him grind it to where it's nice and beautiful, and you won't be able to see any voids. Now that our part's done being centered, we have a fully dense H13 tool steel mold insert with conformal cooling on the inside. As we know, 3D printing can achieve the surface finish and the tolerances required for a mold application. Now this is the only insert that we have, so let's hope that Chris doesn't mess it up. So this part came off Trevor's Metal X 3D printer. Now we're gonna put it on the Studer S31 and we're gonna give it a beautiful finish. Stick around, we're gonna show you how it's done. So we got our part, we're ready for the first operation. The first operation we're gonna put it in our three jaw chuck, indicate it in, and then we're gonna grind the square, and then we're gonna grind the face. For this grind we're gonna be using a Tyrolit 60 grit J wheel, and you can find wheels like this on our store at titansofcnctooling.com. So since we're picking up an existing square rather than creating out of cylindrical stock, we have to approach this part a little bit different. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna back the wheel up, walk it down, and then make initial contact. Once we make initial contact with the part, we're actually gonna kick it out, find our size, so we can come back in. Right now, I got it backed off about 100 thousandths. We're gonna let it do its thing, and then I'm gonna kick it out and walk it back in. So we made initial contact with our part. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let the cycle finish so we can take an accurate measurement. That way we know where we're at, and we can move down to final size. So we just completed our square grind. The grind looks absolutely phenomenal. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grind the face of the part. That way we can go ahead and flip it and put our magnetic chuck. So for the face, we're gonna use a 45 degree angle plunge. You can learn more about angle plunge grinding on our grindingacademy.com. We've got these brand new machina stones. These stones are amazing. They're precision ground on both sides so you have a perfect flat surface to stone your parts with. Similar to the first grind right now, we're just taking a skim cut and then we're gonna see where we're at and we're gonna move it in and find our desired size. So in all these grinds, coolant pressure and coolant placement is key. You actually want your coolant velocity faster than the velocity of your wheel. If it's not faster than the velocity of your wheel, 
the speed of your wheel will actually throw the coolant off and you're more susceptible to burns. Beautiful. All right, so we're done with our face grind. This is the last thing we had to do for the first stop. Let's go ahead and take our part out, change over the magnetic chuck, and get back to grinding. See that? One-handed, baby. So now we got our chuck in the machine, and I locked it down. Now we gotta tighten our bolts. So the way I put this on is I tighten down three, and then I gotta rotate my C-axis so I can get to that fourth one. So now I'm able to get to that last one. So now that all my bolts are tightened, I'm gonna go ahead and give my final snug all the way around the base. Magnetic chuck install. So I had to get a little bit creative and ground these precision fence blocks. And what they're gonna do is when the part's on the magnet, they're gonna butt up to the sides and they're gonna hold our part in securely. That way we can come in with our grinding wheel and finish the journals and the faces. So we're at zero, 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 zero. So now our square is indicated in. We're gonna go ahead and check our main journal to see how bad it's running out. So I got it at zero with about 100 thousandths free pressure. So it's running out about 2 thousandths. That means it's gonna take at least two and a half to three thousandths to clean it up. So now that our part's indicated in, let's go ahead and get grinded. Well, normally, machinists would use dicom, which is a layout fluid, so you know when you're making contact with your part. But on this type of grind, I'm actually using a red permanent marker. That way, it doesn't flake off. So we just pulled the part off of the S31. It looks absolutely amazing. The S31 does an amazing job on one piece orders such as this or production runs. But the S31 is also capable of handling high production jobs. So now that we talked about that, let's take it to inspection and check the finish. There, and we gonna check it. And we gonna make sure that this surface is clean. <laughs> Give it a little blowy. And we're gonna bring our needle down. And this part is a 5.8, and we're going to hit the print button. Oh, look at that, baby. 5.84 RA. Oh, man. So what I'm doing there is I'm supporting it on a journal, right? And then I got a back plate to hold it straight. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tram this top to make sure that's square. And then, in theory, if it's square, then the sides, if I run an indicator up, it shouldn't move. So each side, I trammed the top. Then I ran my indicator up and down our part, and as you can see, that needle's not moving. And that proves that each corner is 90 degrees. And when I did each side, that's a perfect square. So on a cylindrical grinder, we were able to grind a perfect square. I'm really happy with how our insert turned out. Chris did a phenomenal job grinding it. And it just goes to show, when you bring additive and subtractive together under one roof, it opens you up to a whole new world of possibilities. If you haven't already, please go join our Discord server. If you're looking for great deals on the best tooling in the industry, go to store.titansofcnc.com. You won't find better prices anywhere else in the industry. Also, we're making crazy updates to CNC experts. So if you haven't started a free profile, go on there, show off your work, get certified. It's all completely free. Thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you guys next time.